Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at the serverside.com and I wanted to talk to you today about creating a bottom-up EJB, that is, or a bottom-up web service. That is where you take a Java bean or an EJB and then you basically create a SOAP-based web service based upon it. And so the first thing you need to do in order to make that happen is create a dynamic web project inside of Eclipse. I'm going to call it Web service. I'm just going to have a, a minimal configuration because I don't like a lot of overhead and I don't have a target runtime yet, although you know what, I probably should specify some sort of runtime. So I'll use a, a Wildfly runtime. Let's see if I've got that configured on my server. I think I got Wildfly and I got Tomcat and a bunch of different ones in here, but I may as well use Wildfly. I've been using that in the process of developing lots of microservices. Um, and yeah, I think all of that looks good. I noticed it upgraded it to 3.1. That should not be a problem. But basically, you need a dynamic web project and you need, you're going to need a target runtime in order to test this out. And so I set up my Wildfly, click finish, and then you're good to go. Now, I've done a couple of RESTful and SOAP-based web services examples, and in each of those I model a scorekeeper for a rock, paper, scissors application. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to create a new class called the scorekeeper. I'll click finish. And this is what my service will be based on, and that scorekeeper class is going to work on uh, a class called score um, and use a, a class called score to maintain data. Now of course you shouldn't maintain data in a Java class, you should put it in a SQL server or no SQL server or something like that, but we're going to do things uh, in a fairly simple manner and to, to maintain state we're just going to force data into a static variable that the JVM will, will store. Uh, that won't work on a clustered environment, but I don't know, on an individual JVM for testing it will work just fine. So I'm going to create a public static int variable that I'm going to define and ties in. Initialize that to zero. And then in the scorekeeper class, I'm going to have methods where people can get the global score. And this is kind of global for everybody playing the game. We'll do an individual one in a subsequent tutorial. But we'll have some methods like increase wins. And increase wins, what it will do is we'll increase the number of wins by one. And then return the number of wins to the calling program. So score plus plus wins. And you know, I'll do the, the same thing for ties. And I will do the same thing once again for losses. And I'm going to have some getter methods in here as well. I guess you have to Make sure your code compiles. That's never a bad thing to do. There we go. That looks much more handsome. And I'm going to have, I don't know, we'll throw some getter methods in there as well. So, I don't know, why don't we have get wins that doesn't increase the number of wins, just returns it. We'll have get ties that just returns the number of ties. And then we'll have get losses that just returns the number of losses. And I think that's a, a pretty handsome Java class. You can see that this Java class, it's stateless. You know, your web services should be stateless. And the score class, well, it's just kind of delegating to the JVM to manage the local state. So we'll let that pass for now. But as I said, it should be persisting data somewhere else. But all in all, that looks pretty good. Now, say I want to take this and I want to turn it into a SOAP-based web service. Well, how would I do it? Well, one of the ways you could do it is to do a bottom up web service mapping. So I'm going to create a, a new web service. So I go new other, I should see the option down here to create a web service. So I'm going to create a new web service and it says, do you want to do a bottom up mapping? And I'm going to say, yeah, that's what I want to do. Notice there's the option to do bottom up or top down. But I'm going to do a bottom up and here it's actually going to, you know, work on all of these components and create everything that I need. 
um, and even configure this so it'll run using Apache Access. That's not the most modern stuff in the world, but you know there's lots of people still using this technology, um, and so I'm going to use it. Uh, I'm going to select all of my methods to be included in the web service. Those look good, and I'll use a, a document literal WSDL type. That looks good as well. I'll click Next. Everything looks good. I'm going to say let's start the server. The server runs. Everything looks good. I'll click Next. I'll click Next even harder. And I will say launch the Web Explorer to publish the web service to the unit test UDDI direct registry. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to click finish right now. Now you notice in the web content folder there is a listing for WSDL. You can right click on this file and say web services test with web services explorer. And the web services explorer will come up. You notice here's the scorekeeper class or web service. And it's got all of these different methods here and we can go in and trigger the get wins method. Click go. Notice that the response says, I'll make this a little bit bigger, the response says there were zero wins, and we can increase the number of wins, click on the go button, now it says the number of wins is one, increase it again, increase it again, maybe even increase the losses by one, increase the ties by one, and then we can go back and say, hey, let's get the ties, ties is one, the losses is one, and the number of wins is four all according to the way that the web service was implemented, keeping track of that score behind the, behind the scenes. And so that web service is fully up and running on that Wildfly server. There's no smoke and mirrors here. And if I wanted to go in and create a SOAP-based web service client, I wouldn't have any problem calling that SOAP-based web service. And that's it. That's how easy it is to create a top-down or sorry, that's how easy it is to create a bottom-up uh, SOAP-based web service using Eclipse. Um, there is a bit of razzle-dazzle there, so I mean you can see that in the web.xml file we do have a, a reference to some Axis components, so Axis is being used to, to make this happen. Um, some of the more modern mechanisms for doing SOAP-based web service design, like EJB3, uh, doesn't have all of that overhead, um, but this just certainly demonstrates how easy it is to create SOAP-based web services in Eclipse compared to the good old days where a lot of this stuff had to be done by hand.